The time has finally come for the release of Python. This long awaited follow up to Python 3.13 is actually quite feature light compared to its predecessor, though there's still quite a lot to talk about here. A lot of work has gone into getting long awaited changes out the door and a lot more into making small quality of life and performance improvements that add up to a big change overall. Let's get into it, shall we? How about we change things up a bit and start with some of these background changes. The big story here is that free threaded Python is now officially supported and greatly improved from its initial version. There is still a performance penalty when running single threaded code compared to its single threaded sibling. However, this is well within the acceptance target of 15% or 20% for memory. And of course is significantly faster when running code that benefits from multi-threading. The implementation is now also more complete with temporary workarounds being replaced by more permanent solutions and a specializing adaptive interpreter now being enabled. One of the more mind-blowing things to me is that AsyncIO is fully supported in free threaded mode allowing you to have multiple event loops across different threads. You have to be careful not to tear a hole in time and space doing stuff like that. One thing I can finally stop going on about is the deferred evaluation of annotations using descriptors, which is a long time coming, but finally here. For those unaware of what I'm talking about, this is the replacement for importing annotations from Dunda Future, allowing you to get the same benefits without any of the compromises. Essentially, instead of eagerly resolving type annotations when they are defined, Python now lazily evaluates them when they are needed. Static type checkers can still read these annotations, but running code doesn't get mixed up in reference cycles, meaning if you have, say, two classes that reference each other in their annotations, you no longer have to make one a string. If you're a user of the future import, you also no longer have to manually evaluate annotations yourself whenever you want to introspect them, for example when using annotations as converters, saving on processing time and making code cleaner overall. The future import will stick around a bit, being deprecated when Python 3.13 reaches end of life four years from now, and then being removed two years after that, meaning there's plenty of time to get around to removing it. Python's internals have also received a spruce up in two areas the interpreter and the garbage collector. The current interpreter handles most, if not all, opcodes in a giant switch case statement where each opcode has its own case. An opcode, by the way, is just a fancy term for a Python bytecode instruction. The new interpreter uses what's called tail calls, whereby each opcode has its own C function which directly calls the next opcodes function. Python source code is compiled using the Clang compiler, which from version 19 can optimize these tail calls in a way that it can't optimize the giant switch case statement. This optimization makes Python between 3 and 5% faster on average, with up to 30% observed in some situations. Python 3.14 won't use this interpreter by default as it's still experimental, so you'll need to build Python with the with tail call interp flag if you plan to use it. It's also worth noting that this is not tantamount to tail call optimization in Python itself, just the C code it's built on. The new incremental garbage collector will be included as standard though, and in fact was almost included in Python 3.13 before a bug found last minute took it out of the release. It is now less concerned with collecting everything at once and instead collects garbage in increments, meaning the collections, which pause the program for their duration, take less time. If you've ever observed your program seemingly halt for a period at random, you should see that less now. Let's now dive into the only really major syntax change for Python 3.14, template strings. Like the deferred evaluation of annotations, these have a very complicated development history behind them, but you can watch my 3.14 beta if you want to know more about that. Template strings, or T strings for short, look very similar to F strings on the surface, but are in fact very different. Whereas an F string resolves to a normal string, a T string resolves to a template object that can be processed, typically in a callable. Their main purpose is to allow you to intercept and transform interpolated values within expression components of strings that is, the bits inside the curly brackets. This makes them perfect for performing string sanitization or complex string processing tasks, neither of which f-strings can implicitly do. Of course, f-strings will be faster for common tasks, but t-strings now provide an interface for more complex tasks that isn't, well, awful. There is quite a lot to these t-strings, so if you want to learn more about them, you can do so by watching the video in the cards. In more colorful news, PyREPL is now more, well, colorful. Syntax highlighting has been implemented and the colors used can even be themed to your liking. I will say that at this point the theming is experimental and hidden away, but if you're comfortable delving into the internals a little, go nuts. And if you're not, I made a tool for it. I still haven't put it on PyPI yet, which I really need to get around to. Either way, I made a video if you want to learn more. That's not it for PyREPL changes though, as auto-completion has now been implemented, meaning you can complete lines of code by simply hitting tab. 
Considering where the interactive shell was just a few years ago, it's crazy how good it is now. On top of all that, color outputs have been added to the CLIs for the unit test, argpass, JSON, and calendar modules. As always, error messages have been improved, and there are quite a lot of improvements this time. The error system can now detect typos in keywords, be more informative about unpacking assignment errors, detect usage of elif after else, highlight where statements have been improperly passed to conditional expressions, detect improperly closed strings as well as incompatible string prefixes, be more detailed regarding the usage of the as keyword with incompatible targets, be clearer when unhashable types are added to dictionaries of sets, and let you know when you've used async with instead of with for synchronous context managers and vice versa for asynchronous ones. Wow. Those of you who like debugging will love the fact that you can now remotely attach to a running Python process with PDB simply by passing a PID to a new flag. It works using the new safe external debugging interface for Python 3.14 and allows you to debug processes interactively without having to write anything into the file you want to debug. On top of that, if you have any programs that use asyncio tasks, there is a new command line tool that shows you a table or a tree if you prefer all of the currently running tasks. The tree view is particularly useful as not only can it help you identify slow or stuck tasks, it can also detect cycles, though mainly because the tree can't actually be created while they're present. Finally, as always, I want to highlight some cool new features which were otherwise buried, but also shine a light on some neat optimizations that aren't being shown off as much as everything else. Regarding new features, string parse time and string format time methods have now been added to date time's time class. JSON serialization errors now include notes that contain more detailed information of the source of the error. You can now reload environment variables on the fly with os.reloadenviron. Copy, copy into, move, and move into methods have been added to PathLib's path class to allow you to recursively move or copy files. And for those brave souls among you trying to program Bluetooth sockets for NetBSD or Dragonfly BSD systems, you're in luck as these now work properly. And for optimizations, import times for a great many standard library modules have been improved. Async IO performance in benchmarks has improved 10 to 20% while still managing to reduce memory usage by implementing a new per thread double linked list for native tasks, whatever that means. Reading files is now faster, with the I.O. module seeing speed ups of up to 15% and path.readbytes getting 9-17%. to Generating UUID 4 strings is now 30% faster, and while niche, I had to point out that decoding base 16 data is now 6 times faster than it was before. Nice one. Of course, that is a far from comprehensive list of changes for Python, and I would encourage you to look at the official documentation for the release for more information. While you're at it, feel free to leave a comment with your favorite change. I wanna know what you think. And if you could like and subscribe too, that would be ace. <laughs> for my more regular viewers, there have been and still will be some very big changes in my life, hence the lack of uploads over the last few months. I couldn't miss this one though, and hope to see you again sometime in the new year. But with that, I hope you enjoy Python 3.14, and I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.